All right, I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step exactly how I made this video in Unreal Engine 5. After this video, you should have the tools to make your own awesome projects. I'm gonna go over my entire workflow from start to finish. This includes modeling and texturing, lighting, rendering, color grading, everything. So let's just get right into it. So I always like starting out with a block out. I do this because I can use simple shapes to quickly build the scene out and create an effective composition. You could do this with the final assets later, but I like doing it at the beginning because then you don't have to worry about the composition while you worry about the specifics of every object. It's like the composition and overall scene is already set up and working, so now I can just focus on the smaller details. I do this by adding simple shapes into the level and then scaling and rotating them to create the scene. I'll also add a Sin camera actor into the level so I can visualize exactly how the final product would look. You can also adjust some camera settings here like the aspect ratio, FOV, and anything else you might want to edit. I even added one point light in the scene to help me further visualize the end product. Once my block out is finished, I started gathering my assets. I downloaded this free character and a walking animation from Mixamo.com, this free ancient golem model from Unreal Marketplace, and then I downloaded a bunch of rocky assets from Quixel Megascans. A bunch of my Megascans assets were slightly different colors and they weren't really what I was envisioning so I started editing their materials. To do this I double clicked the materials that were assigned to each model and played with the parameters until I was happy with how the asset was looking. Once all of my meshes were in my level and looking good I started replacing my block out with these rocky cliffs and textures. While doing this I'm constantly changing my perspective to the camera's view to check in on how that's looking because ultimately what the camera sees is the most important part. This is one of my favorite parts of the process as it feels like I go from like 1% into the project to basically like 75% done. Especially if you've already blocked out your scene because then you basically just fill everything in. After this, I started editing my camera's movement so I could get the full scope of everything the camera would see during the video. I did this by clicking this icon here and selecting add level sequence. This is basically the timeline of my video. Then I clicked this track button and selected my camera to add it to the sequence. I moved the camera to where I wanted it to start, added a keyframe in the transform row of the sequence and then did the same thing for where I wanted my camera to finish at the end of the video. But it was a bit too smooth for my liking so I wanted to add some camera shake. To do this I right clicked in my content browser, selected blueprint class and then used camera shake base as a parent class. I clicked this little plus sign beside my camera to add the new blueprint to my camera and then change the root shake pattern of the blueprint to Perlin noise camera shake pattern and then adjusted some of the remaining parameters. There we go, now we have a camera shake. Looking at what I have so far, I actually adjusted my block out a bit as I thought it might be cooler if the subject was strung up with chains coming from all directions instead of just one from the top. This idea got me pretty excited so I dove in actually modeling the chain in Blender. I opened Blender and created a torus. I selected half of the torus and pulled it out a little bit so it looked like a chain link. I duplicated the shape a bunch of times using an array modifier and now it just needs to be UV unwrapped. I selected the entire model in edit mode, pressed U on my keyboard and selected smart UV project. Not a great unwrap but these chains will be so far away from the camera that you won't really be able to see any weird tiling issues. After that I exported this model as an FBX and brought it in a substance painter. Within the texture set settings I scrolled down and selected bake mesh maps. Once the baking was finished, I dragged a pre-made material called steel, rust, and wear onto my chain model and then just edited the parameters of the material until I was happy with it. I exported all of these textures into a few channel pack textures and then brought everything into Unreal Engine. I migrated a master material that I made from a past project into this project, right clicked it and selected create material instance. I added my chain textures to this material and adjusted some of the parameters so that the chain was a bit less reflective in the light. I applied this material to my chain mesh and then placed the chain assets around my level to fill in the block out I created earlier. Using multiple chains was also a great way to introduce a bunch of leading lines towards my subject. Having these two chains closer to the camera also helps create a sense of scale as well. Now it's onto the lighting which is my favorite part. To light this scene I had two orange point lights underneath the subject and then one or two blue spotlights coming from above so that it looked like a bit of light from outside of the cave was peeking in. I also loved how the subject would be split up into the blue and orange lighting. On top of the main lights I also added a few spotlights to fill up the cave that the camera's in as well as more of the cave's floors and walls. I wanted it to kind of look like the entire cave was being lit up by the single orange light source underneath the subject. I also added an exponential height fog to add some atmosphere to the scene. Through editing the parameters of the fog and the lights I was able to get some really cool volume 
volumetric lighting. Speaking of atmosphere, I also want to add a floating ember effect to the scene. To do this, I right clicked in the content browser and selected Niagara System and used the hanging particulates as a system template. I dragged the blueprint into the scene and then double clicked it. Under initialized particle, I edited some of the parameters, most notably the particle lifetime, color, and sprite size. For the most part, these control what the particles actually look like and how long each one is on the screen for. Under wind force, I edited the wind speed and under aerodynamic drag, I adjusted the min and max values. Okay, at this point, the scene is basically set up. I just need to add my characters to the scene, which is super easy. I start by dragging my ancient golem mesh into the scene and scaling him up. The spinny drill thing came as a separate asset, so I was able to add a pre-made animation to it by adding the drill to the sequence with this track button. Adding the animation to it was super easy because I just clicked this plus icon and selected it. After that, I added some rim lighting to the giant robot guy using a few blue spotlights and then added a smaller orange point light underneath him to add some more lighting onto the front of his body. Then I repeated the exact same process with my Mixamo character. I added him to the level, added him to the sequencer, applied his animation, and then lit him up a bit with a spotlight. Okay, this is pretty much done, but I want to add one small detail. I added a $15 plugin from the Unreal Marketplace to my level called Easy Fog that allows me to add these fog cards in. I plop these guys around my level to add more texture and atmosphere to the scene. Honestly, all I really did was play around with the different parameters here until the fog looked how I wanted it to. Once I was happy with the fog card, I duplicated it around the level and adjusted each one a bit so they didn't look repetitive by scaling and rotating them. Okay, at this point we're completely finished with Unreal Engine 5. I exported the entire scene as a PNG sequence and then brought those PNGs into DaVinci Resolve so we can color grade it. To do this, I created two nodes, one to adjust my levels and one to adjust the color. For my levels, I always end up bringing up my blacks as I find I have a tendency to make things pretty dark and high contrast. I brought the whites down a tad as well and then added a slight S curve to my curve. For the color, if I'm being 100% honest, I just play around with it until I like how it looks. I'll often have my references open while I'm color grading so I can constantly compare how my work looks versus how I want it to look. And there we go, we're done. Okay, if you guys want to keep learning how to create videos and environments like this in Unreal Engine 5, subscribe because I'm going to keep posting videos like this to help you guys learn. Okay, see ya.